Greetings, noble Sunites. Welcome to another edition of that shameful secret magic that we call Sun Live. A live time slot here at RVTV that we tend to get stuck with because nobody else likes to record live on a Friday night because they're rightfully afraid that they might screw it up. We here at Sun have no such fears because we're virile and we're mighty and because our whole broadcast is one big comedy blooper in the first place. So, we are immune to the fear of failure as we have proved that there is no ground floor in the building of talent. Tonight, Ascot is out of town, leaving me to man the desk alone. RVTV finally gave him a vacation after nearly seven years of wretched, sweaty desk work. I don't know where he went for his vacation. Probably just sitting in his back deck, crying over missed opportunities, broadcasting for someone who pays him. I don't know. Maybe he has warm lemonade in his hand. Maybe not. They don't let me take vacations anymore because the last time I snuck down to Tijuana on Company Dime was also the last time that the company handed out expense cards to anybody. So now I get solo time at the desk, which means I'm pretty much on timeout and also leaves me to my exciting live show for you for tonight. Now most of you haven't seen all of our last season and I know that the citizens of Southern Oregon, I'm gonna bet bottom dollar to cracker that most of you are too lazy to go and actually watch those whole previous episodes. Heck, I can't even get my own mother to watch the whole thing. She keeps insisting that I do something meaningful with my life, and I keep insisting that she goes and tunes into our early episodes, which is why I keep sending her sarcastic greeting cards with pictures of Ascot on them. So, Mom, this is your chance to get it together. Anyway, tonight we're beginning our wrap-up of the Season 1 with our Best of Showcases, which is highlighting a little uh, hilarity from the first three episodes of the Southern Oregon News Network from our humble beginnings of filming in my living room in episode one to our humble continuation uh, when we finally got access to the Southern Oregon's finest public access, access station, not asses station. That's not good. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, let's see. When we finally got access to Southern Oregon's first public access station by episode two. We very much enjoyed the wild improving it took to film these shows as much as we uh, wildly resented the countless hours that it took to edit all of the digital mess of our footage into something that has any continuity at all. I hope you enjoy yourself. Now, roll the crip, roll. <laughs> now I'll roll the clip, maestro. On with highlights from episode one. A story that personally has me very excited is that water has been confirmed on Mars. It's been found in the deeper craters on the uh, Martian Plateau, and there's water on Mars, people. There's no water on Mars. There was once water on Mars. Water has been confirmed to have once existed on Mars. In the deeper craters and plateaus of the Martian atmosphere, water has been discovered in its thickened uh, hydrostatic uh, formula... No. Don't add too many goddamn details if you know nothing about this story. <laughs> They're looking at rocks. It's a bear. I mean, what is he gonna have to say anyways? <laughs> right? Like it was something to say? What do you mean, what kind of bear? What kind of bear? What kind of bear? I don't know. It could be any kind of bear. I don't know. Maybe it's a really personable bear. She's our temporary sports broadcaster. We don't think she's going to stick. Oh, let's watch. The ducks got spanked so hard, and I think they liked it. Watching them throw the ball halfway across the field was just so exciting. I love football. I don't think we can show that on the air. That was... Um... Does that woman actually work for the network? I've never seen her before. I certainly can't forget her now, though. I knew it. <laughs> Uh, I don't think you should be filming. Hello! Oh, it's a delivery guy. Thanks, man. No problem. Thank you very much. All right. All right. You want a copy? Uh, no, I'm all set. And now, a roller coaster that will actually kill you. The roller coaster was designed to take the rider up a 500 meter climb to a dizzying height. Apparently, what will happen is that riding on the roller coaster will actually cause your organs to fail. Is that correct? No, have you seen the picture of the fucking thing? Certainly not. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> the idea behind the coaster is that the g-forces actually separate your heart and lungs, causing a euphoric state as your body is dashed to pieces. 
And if the first drop doesn't take you out, the next six loops probably will. That sounds horrible. Why do they call it the Euphoria Coaster? They don't call it that. That's completely in your head. It's called the Euthanasia Coaster. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. Euphoria is a state of bliss. Euthanasia is a state of death. Oh. Cutting to weather. Okay. Cut. Um, did anybody actually hire a weather person? It appears not. Ah. Hey, you, sound guy. Uh, what's the weather in Southern Oregon like today? It's, uh, kind of drizzly. Pretty rainy. Rainy in Southern Oregon. Well, it's always raining somewhere in Oregon. It's a pretty good bet. It certainly is. Oh, that was fun. Uh, water down dwarves. An epileptic. That's not what it says. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's pretty close to what it says. I'm pretty sure you need glasses. I don't need glasses. I have eyes like an eagle. An eagle that needs glasses. Are you awake and incredibly high? Well, me too. Tune in to RVTV's new amazing broadcast, Southern Oregon News Network. I believe that's federally illegal. <laughs> we won't use this <laughs> one then. You can't advocate the use of okay. illegal substances. <clears throat> Are you staying up late? Maybe you're slightly out of your mind. Well, now is the time to tune in to RVTV's new amazing broadcast, the Southern Oregon News Network, the newsiest news on the net. So you're just gonna say it all. I'm gonna take all of the words for me. No words for you all for me. Southern Oregon News Network, tune in. This guy's there, I'm there, I'm talking a lot. I got all the spot. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Southern Oregon. <laughs> but here's something even crazier. It's called cover blubber. And for people that get tired of using all of that disposable cellophane wrap, the cover blubber actually goes over your item like a gelatinous holding prison to protect and preserve your food. It's reusable, it's mostly non-toxic, and it's going to revolutionize your kitchen. Cover blubber. How about that? I think that's a terrible invention. The next is a, um, a huge clip with a foam grip. I'm pretty sure that's just a carabiner. That's not an invention at all. Why is that even on our list? A huge Cross that clip with a foam grip. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm Good night. Thanks for tuning in. This has been an excellent time for us to practice all the things that we've done wrong. Thank you for tuning in to the first Southern Oregon News Network broadcast. It's been a real pleasure. A. Scott McGlasson. McG. A. Scott McG. A. Scott whose name will not be known. And that's the news. Hope you learned something. I didn't. Next time on the Southern Oregon News Network. It's gonna be a beautiful day, son. Shit. Hi, Jason. Damn, girl. That's what I'm talking about. Come over here, let me talk to you a little bit. I'm Donna Cleveland, and this has been the Nympho News. Aren't you? I feel the same way. When I was your age, I took up the drink. That made me strong. And that's the news, son. Well, that was just a dang ducky wing dinger. <laughs> nice to see old faces and enjoy that crappy home video light and sound experience. Ascot actually lit our desk with shop lights clipped to my curtains. Our first director was so drunk from filming the scenes down at the tavern that he uh, ordered a pizza that was delivered right in the middle of the shoot. And we had no teleprompter at all, so we had to uh, pretend we were reading from one. We also tried to, uh, oh no, wait, I don't remember. We, we tried the heavy, laugh can uh, sound uh, stuff that got knocked right out by our, our first 10 fans because, and I quote, the early 90s made shitty TV, don't put us back through that quagmire again. So, lesson learned. But the Southern Oregon News Network had been thoroughly born. So now let's mosey on to highlights from the episode two. We got accepted into RVTV broadcast slot that nobody else wanted and away we went into filming an episode that is still one of my favorites. Let's watch episode
And on to tonight's headlines. That's my freaking life! Nice plays. Hey, cheers, Viking! Hey, good dancing. Hey, who is this bird guy? Video games? Bubbles! That's pie. What's this plan? She's cute. Good party. Everyone's Wow, that was a short break. Oh, uh, wow. What is that, uh, uh, like a 15 second commercial? That was really not long uh, enough. Uh, the teleprompter guy is no longer advancing the teleprompter forward. Certainly not. The uh, ramifications of clean energy that can fit in the back of a truck are basically astounding, although I would not want to be riding in that truck if it gets hit by another truck. Yes, there may very well be the tearing of atoms near your very home. A cat cafe? What's that? Oh boy, I'm glad you asked that, Ascot. I noticed Purrington's in the middle of your story moved from Portland to Medford. That is Explain. A, a very inappropriate 280 mile jump. Could there be any other explanation? This reporter thinks not. This reporter also thinks not. Uh, yeah, roll it back a little bit uh, there on the queue. Back, 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 back. Great. And now we go to weather with... Oh, yeah. Thanks to Weather Man. God damn, it's hot out there. Shit. Hey, hold that stuff. Yeah, brother, what's up? No, I'm doing one for the weather, man. You can't call me right now. I got that snow. Man, I'll get you later, bro. Yeah, yeah. Let me call you back. Or late. Now, I don't know if you and me are the same. I mean, I guess organically speaking, we have some differences. But this reporter's mind was deeply blown. I feel like we're really pushing the envelope now. Star Trek. We're going to get there. We're going to get into space. I'm telling you, we're going to space. We're finally going to make it. Rocks! So Pet rock for your computer. You know what they say. Sell me crap once. Good job. Sell me crap twice, 40 years later. I don't think there's a saying for that. Bedrock USB. <laughs> what does it do, Gordon? It sits. I guess it rocks, actually. <laughs> it, it looks like it's... Yeah. Um... The facial flex is a, a wonderful invention for people that have a size concerns. Uh, it's really good for exercising the muscles in your mouth, like you're um, singing or uh, performing a Muppet uh, show. The facial flex. Mm. Ooh. Moving on. And now, our movie review section. Do, do we have anybody doing the, to do the movie review? Uh, no, I've been told that we don't have anybody to do the movie review. Uh, well, um, have you seen any good movies uh, there lately, Ascot? I did. I, uh, I just saw the, the Lego movie. Oh, the Lego movie was awesome. Oh, my God. I love this song. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of the team. If you're worried about finding nothing good to watch, you're in luck because you found something to watch. Something that will evoke feelings in you of some kind. You may find that the news is quite newsy here. You may find that your spirits are lifted and that your body is going translucent. You may find that your water has been spiked. And I apologize for that. <laughs> Southern Oregon News Network. We're happy that you're happy. And if you're not happy, well, f <laughs> <laughs> Well, now here's an interesting story. Johnny Strange of the United Kingdom holds the record for the most apples held in the mouth 
and cut by a chainsaw in one minute, which is apparently eight. <laughs> Imagine a movie that was made for only $30,000 that scared even the director of The Exorcist. The Babadook. Babadook. Afterwards, when it, yeah, you're just feeling those fear and then you just get to be really close with someone and have that same fear be really consensual fear, it's really an emotional roller coaster of joy and scaredness. Oh, yeah. You gotta see it. The Baba Duck is 10 out of 10, would recommend every time. Every time. The Baba Duck. The Something about the, uh, yeah. Uh, to, uh, uh yeah. Baba Duck. In the world, son. Aren't you? I feel the same way. When I was your age, I took up the drink. That made me strong. Then for a while, I was a sailor on the open sea. And then I got into raising llamas. You have all of these opportunities, too. Well, hot diddly dang, look at how much classier we got in that episode. A bunch of regular gentlemen now, that's us. We even put on pants. Episode two included a few pivotal moments, including the introduction of our popular cast member, Gangster Weatherman, and uh, um, also a bunch of other stuff that I forgot to mention because I was in the bathroom having a beer while that clip rolled. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, on to episode three. Um, what are you doing here? <laughs> Here's Gordon Mackey oh. and our awesome makeup artist, Lola Lovecraft. She's doing her thing, and look, he looks so great right now. This is so humiliating. And then here we have Aspen Arrow. Who took Aspen's... my sunglasses? Who took my glasses, man? I can't see a thing. Oh, I don't know. I think I might have. Here, you can wear these. Um, and here's... Hi! Hi, this is Wanda. And then here is uh, Charles, the production manager at RVTV, right? Yeah, awesome. And then, you know, this is where all the magic happens, where all the things get touched and buttons get pushed, and it's awesome. It's so exciting. Um, this is, these are all our, all our uh, camera people. I don't know his name. What's your name? Here's John, and he's camera three. He does a lot of magical stuff here. Um, yeah. <laughs> our, our weather reporter. Um, he's really cool, and he's really nice, and we hang out all the time, and yeah, yeah and he's great. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is the behind the scenes. Here, here, here. Get on my microphone, girl. No. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Good evening, I'm your lead anchor, and this is not what I'm supposed to be talking. Good job, a-hole. <laughs> you stole my line. Good evening, I'm your lead anchor, A. Scott McGee. And I'm your assistant lead anchor, Gordon Mackey. Welcome to the Southern Oregon News Network's fourth, 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 Fourth broadcast. I believe that is our fourth broadcast, is it not? It isn't. I can't count. I also can't see. I forgot my glasses at home today, so everything is a watercolored blur. Reality itself is skewed and warped to my own limited perspective.
weatherman. In a country that considers french fries and ketchup both vegetables, how does your kid's school lunch stack up to the Frenchies? In a country that considers the rhubarb a lost idol of a civilization better forgotten, how does your kid's lunch stack up to the rest of the school lunch eating world? Poorly. Toast. I'll Are your you. sandwiches not creepy enough? I think so. The toast stamp in, uh, let's see, different designs such as Panda, the Virgin Mary, Union Jack, maybe you need a Paris theme, or etc. For me, when I wake up in the morning and I don't have enough Panda in my situation, I freak out. It's a very good, did I say very good? <laughs> <laughs> so I did, I did say very good. Uh, uh, what was it actually called again? Hmm? What are we talking about? The hot man trivet. What the hell? Not what it sounds. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Remember it's the little metal dude that holds up your pot? Oh yeah, oh I kind of uh, like this one. It's hilarious. I should have seen it on the teleprompter immediately behind me, but the eyes in the back of my head are covered with my jaunty hat. Runny nose yolk separator. I'm gonna let Gordon take this one, cause it's freaking nasty. The runny nose yolk separator, a perfect way to put yourself into a state of contortion. Look at this guy's nasty face, now it's dripping out your eggs. Guess what? Those eggs are more healthy for you because it's just the whites. Thank goodness he's got a runny nose and you can live longer. Think about it. An innocent owl who is nesting in a tree in Salem has, quote, attacked several people encroaching on his territory. MSNBC's correspondent Rachel Maddow Maddow? <laughs> recently weighed in. The show jokingly suggested that the city put up a sign. Recently, the city has secured rights to the show's idea for the sign and has now put up 20 of them. The city of Salem is now aware that they're in constant danger from bloodthirsty owls dropping down on them like weights of doom from the sky above. Rachel Mad Owl. I think I said it right that time. Rachel Mad Owl. Mad Owl. Which is funny. Very funny. If you're not laughing, then f*** you. Are you from Northern Oregon? Move. <laughs> <laughs> That's just rude. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a couple of things that you don't have down here. The first one is called vitamin D from sunlight. And the second one, apparently, is that we're not afraid of flipping owls. How about that? Your primitive human body will no longer be dashed to pieces against the hard rocks of your imagination when you imagine yourself driving a new car made of super steel. Super steel. Super. The moral of the story is since steel has been invented, we've taken it for granted that it's heavy, hard, and difficult to use. That's what she said. <laughs> Do you have no need for your poop? Somebody else will take it and pay you. Sound surprising? Well, it is. A nonprofit, thankfully, called um, Open Biome apparently frees your poo and feed it to other people. Whereas in most countries, this would be called cruel, unscientific, and just plain wrong, <laughs> it seems to be the cutting edge for a treatment of, uh, I don't know, I don't know what you would treat I, with that, that's just nasty. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a gorgeous day, what the hell you doing sitting on the couch wasting your life away? You ain't got no job, you ain't got shit to do, you might as well go out to the lake and get high today. I mean, wait, can I say that on? No, I don't know if I can say that. 
You don't get high, and nobody get high. A family kidnaps their son to teach him a lesson. He is, quote, too nice to strangers, therefore they had a stranger kidnap and hold him for six hours. The entire family is now facing criminal charges. Even the son? Except for the son, I'm almost sure. Unless he did something illegal while well, he was trying to escape, which there's no indication that he tried to escape. So I am now just making things up. I heard a rumor, so I will now report it as fact. Small child going to jail for being kidnapped by his own family. Two American sisters have been deported after doing a nude photo shoot in Anger Wat. Angor Wat. The two sisters were deported from the country for six months and were given an international spanking. A spanking which I, for one, wish I'd been there to experience with them, either in person as the spankor or a possible alternative for the spanky. Please disregard everything you hear from Gordon Mackey. In fact, we at the Southern Oregon News Network would like to recant everything he's ever said and let you know that he will be fired. I have no pants on. The Southern Oregon News team is very excited and dare I say titillated that you've become a regular viewer. We know that you have important things to do with your time and or brain. We would like to thank you for allowing us to fill it with our kind of garbage. We should inform you though that the things that you learn on this channel are dubious at best and our scruples are fairly unscrupulous. It should be mentioned that if it weren't for the French we'd be speaking Old English right now. So thanks France. Sorry about all those jokes that we made at your expense for the last, God, I don't know, two or three hundred years. It's been a good run, actually. B.S. You suck at war. <laughs> if you were interested in what's going on in the world today, stay tuned to A. Scott and Mr. Gordon himself. They'll tell you something. You beautiful sons of guns, you made it all the way through this episode, and I'm going to appreciate the heck out of you for it. Thanks once again for tuning in to a racky, wacky blast back from the past on the seat of your pants kind of broadcast that we like to do here at RVTV. I hope you enjoy your evening as much as I enjoyed watching you uh, enjoy it through the thin lens of the camera. And together, you and I have made history by viewing the best of as it was in the making. Thank you very much for tuning in. And I hope when Ascot comes back, he's not deeply ashamed of me for sitting here and crapping up the desk all by myself. <laughs> Enjoy the summer sun, you bastards, and get out there and get crazy. Signing off. Let's do a slow drift. I want to feel magnificent here alone in the desk. Ah, oh, all the elbow room without Ascot here. Oh, it's awesome. I'm going to drink out of my ducky mug. He hates this one. Mmm. Ascot, you lucky. I hope your back porch is as fun as I think it might be. Ugh, this water tastes like strychnine. <laughs>